This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Coming up on this episode of Charlotte Cooks, we're making something really fabulous with these beautiful leaves. Can you guess what they are? Stay tuned and find out. Hello there and welcome to this episode of Charlotte Cooks. I'm so glad you're here with us today. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts and joining me in my kitchen is Chef Sam Dimenich from Upstream. And we are gonna be making an absolutely delicious dish with some surprising ingredients. I bet you there's some things here you haven't tried before. So let's find out. Hi Sam, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good, so what are we making today? We're gonna to make marinated grouper with brown rice that's seasoned with shiso chimichurri. Okay. Meyer lemon, a white soy vinaigrette, and some baby bok choy. Tell us about the marinade. What, what is tinsuyu? I would love to, okay, so tinsuyu traditionally is almost like a dipping sauce. Okay. But it also works as a really, really nice marinade, especially for seafood. Okay, so what's right. in it? So what's in it, very important. So we have dashi, right, which is like a, a bay stock made from kombu and bonito flake. Right. All right. We have mirin, we have sake, mm -hmm. and then we have soy sauce. Oh, it sounds lovely. And you just combine it all together. Just mix it together, all right? So here's the sake. I can smell it, mm, it smells wonderful. Mirin. And soy. And soy. And so that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just a nice, simple marinade. Yeah, very versatile. But what I like about it the most is there's no sugar in this. Yeah. There's no okay. aromatics. It, it really is, um, the flavor is more umami. Okay. And a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of soy. Right, okay, so what are we gonna do next? Okay, so next we're gonna marinate our grouper. Okay, so we have a grouper and we have a small dish we're gonna put this in. Well, we kind do. of a larger-ish dish. We do, <laughs> we do. But we're gonna do it. Yep, so really, really important is the quality of the fish. How are we gonna marinate this? So, very simply. Put it in a dish? Yeah, you put it in, a, you know, like a, a safe dish. We're gonna just gonna cover it up. And that's as simple as it gets. We're just gonna marinate this overnight. We overnight. marinate 24 okay. hours. Okay, so you put it in the refrigerator and let it marinate overnight. Yep, wrap it up, make sure it's nice and secure, nice and tight, and okay. then we just marinate overnight. The next thing we're gonna make is some rice for our dish, right? So we have a short grain brown rice from, okay. uh, made right down the road in South Carolina. Oh, right. right. So, it's, so it's really, really important, I think, for this rice to be a short grain to go with a dish because mm -hmm. it has to have that nutty element. Yeah, and right. the chewy element. Yeah, and we're gonna finish this with a chimichurri that we're gonna make later on. Ooh. So everything is tied in together. Uh -huh. So to make rice, basically what kind of a ratio are you using? Well, for the steamer here, because mm -hmm. of the pressure, we go up just a little bit higher than one to one. Okay. Even with the brown rice. Okay. It's, it might sound surprising, uh, but it works. And you don't want to overcook it. No, you don't want to overcook it. Right. It gets mushy. So add your water and then your rice. If you'd hand me that salt right there, we'll add salt. just a touch Absolutely. of salt. There you go. All right, and that spoon, please. There you go. Very good. So you just want to give it a, just a nice stir. Make sure there's no clumps. Mm -hmm. You know, it sits in the, in the steamer evenly. Close the lid. The next element of our dish is? Our Meyer lemon. Meyer lemon yep. and vinaigrette. And white soy vinaigrette. White soy vinaigrette. Where do you get white soy sauce? I have a source okay. that we get a lot of our specialty items mm -hmm. from, so it comes rather easily for me. But most of your specialty markets carry a lot of stuff now that we used to not be able to get. So let's talk about Meyer lemons. What is a Meyer lemon and why is it different than a regular lemon? Okay, the Meyer lemons are different flavor wise. Okay. They look a lot like a regular lemon. Mm -hmm. um, flesh, flavor, and of course the zest, the all important zest. It's almost a sweeter element than, mm -hmm. a, than, a, than a sour lemon would be. Right. You know, some people compare it to like a, a orange meets a lemon okay. type flavor okay. here, but I like it in this vinaigrette because it's well-rounded, mm -hmm. all right? And we need that because we have other elements in here that, that bring a little bit of acidity. So how would we put this vinaigrette together? Okay, so this is gonna be a warm vinaigrette, a really, really simple vinaigrette. It's a vinaigrette that I think that works really, really well with seafood and has a lot of different flavor spectrums in there. So here's our white soy. Okay. And then we're gonna use, in this vinaigrette, we're gonna use ginger that's already been pickled. Okay. 
Most commonly, you'll see that, um, you know, sushi bars. Right. A little bit of brown sugar there. Well, that's and sometimes we see that pink ginger. Could you use that pink ginger in there too? You, you go for the white. Go for the white. Go for the white. Color. Right. Go for the white. Absolutely. And, you know, and the reason is it, it is that it's pickled, so it already has that. It has a little bit of the acidic element that mm -hmm. we're looking for in a vinaigrette anyway. Mm -hmm. That we don't have to get out of our fruit. Right. Okay. Or a vinegar. Okay. Sesame oil. No, is this the toasted sesame oil? Toasted sesame oil. It's got to smell like a burning tire. If it doesn't smell <laughs> like a burning tire, it's not real toasted sesame oil. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Aromatic is everything, right? Absolutely. The aroma is everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so here we have sambal, which is a chili paste that we use in the restaurant. A good substitution for that would be um, like sriracha. Okay. You know, it's sriracha. Got, sriracha's got a little bit of a different flavor than it sambal. It does. It sure does. But it is, it is a, a, an acceptable substitute. Sure, sure. Meyer lemons, we're going to use two for this. Okay. Do they have seeds in them like regular lemons? They sure do. They do, don't they? And they look just like regular they lemons. They sure do. Yep. Their skin looks like it's a lot thinner, though. See how thin it is? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So you're squeezing lemons through your fingers and catching the seeds. I do. Smart. I do. I do. We're, we, we take a hands-on approach, you know, that's kind of the way I was trained and that's kind of the way I like it. And one thing about squeezing citrus through your fingers, you certainly find out if you've got any injuries or not, don't you? <laughs> Instantly. 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 <laughs> yep. It's kind of like that. that Message that. delivered. <laughs> and then last but not least, our okay. uh, neutral oil. Okay. So Here like we a have soybean oil. oil. Soybean oil. We do. Grapeseed oil. Mm -hmm. Vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. Okay. Absolutely. Something with not any flavor. All right, so we have a, a handy little handheld blender. You know, if you have a, an immersion blender or, or this is a, or a bar blender, that works mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. All right. So we just heat that up then, right? Because what, what are we going to do with this? Okay, so, so the thing about this vinaigrette mm -hmm. is that you want to make it warm but not hot. Right, so right. you don't want to bring it to a boil. Right. And now well we're done. going to find out what those beautiful leaves were at the beginning of the show, right? That's correct. Okay, so all, let's... All part of the building flavor process. Absolutely. To make a dish. Absolutely. So tell us about these leaves. Okay. What are they? So these are our, known as shiso leaves. You'll see them sometimes in red. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, what's so remarkable about this flavor, it's, it's almost like a cross between basil and, and mint. Okay. You know, you'll hear it sometimes, it's Japanese mint, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, I think it has more savory, aromatic effect. Yes, it does. Right? Mm -hmm. Than the sweeter effect. So we're going to make a chimichurri out of this? We're going to make a chimichurri. And chimichurri is typically made with, with things like parsley and some is. oregano. Typically, chimichurri doesn't have ginger in it, does it? So this one's going to be a little bit different, but it is the whole process of making chimichurri the same. So those of you who are into chimichurri, pay attention because this is marvelous. We're going to use some ginger. All right, so when we go into the store to buy ginger, we find ginger that sometimes is nice and big and huge, right? Is there any tip that you want to give anybody on what to look for when you're buying ginger? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I like the, the bigger, the better, mm -hmm. almost always. And then, of course, freshness, uh, see how this shines. Uh, you can just look at it and tell, you it's know. It's a that, nice piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that it's attractive. So visually, very fresh. Uh, firm to touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this looks good. Yeah, you don't want it to be mushy and you want it to feel like it's got some weight to it too, okay? And so if you go in there and you see a piece and you don't want that big of a piece, break it off and buy what you want. We've got a peel on here. Are you going to take the peel off that? We do. I'll show you. Okay. I'll show you exactly how we do it. Okay, so we just have a, just a spoon, a teaspoon, right? And this is, this is so much more effective than a vegetable peeler Absolutely or using a paring knife. Uh, you lose so much less which is important because it costs money, right? Yeah. And you know, what I do at home, and I'm sure a lot of other people do this as well, if you have ginger, fresh ginger, that you're not going to be using up right away, pop it in the freezer. And you can always put it on your microplane like this to, uh, oh gosh, that smells good. Um, put it on your microplane to shred it up and uh, the um, frozen ginger will last and it doesn't lose its flavor. I like to buy the nice fresh baby ginger and I stick some in the freezer and I use the tips and the leaves for tea then I can use the roots later on for um, whatever kind of seasonings I want. So nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a good way to operate, mm -hmm. especially in this business. Oh yeah, because you know, all of our profit comes from the little things we can make money on that we don't necessarily have to spend money on. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. How far can you make your food stretch? Because food's not cheap. I think we all know that. So we have a nice little knob, mm -hmm. ginger, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just gonna use my knife 
Okay, and knowing that we're about to process this anyway, right. so it doesn't have to be perfect. Right. 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 You, just, you, you, know, you just want to break it down so it's manageable. So you don't want to put a giant hunk in there because everything else we're putting in there is going to be kind of small and delicate. And so you want this to be able to, when we're done with the processing, to be small enough that you don't have to continue processing because this is not broken down enough. Right, yeah, you don't want to have an impact on your flavor or your mm -hmm. texture. Both are very important. God, this smells so good. Yeah, okay, so, smells so I just stack these up. I make okay. nice slices, stack them up, mm -hmm. right? And then just go back through with my knife. Just make them into nice little fine pieces. Are you gonna dice that? I am. Okay, so you're gonna turn it again. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And one thing about doing it like this, it makes it a lot easier to measure. Yeah. You know, if you're measuring the ginger, yes. or anything for that matter, right? You want to try to make sure that you're consistent. And that flavor releases into the air with Didn't every smell good? knife cut you make. Oh, yes, it does. It smells wonderful. Then it, you know, it's nice and bright. Yes. Um, you know, and I think it's, it, you know, it's really, really one of those, one of the more inviting flavors uh, that, you know, that we have in the food world. Absolutely. Jimmy Cherry, how are we going to start this? So, you know, first thing, First, you know, just, just to take kind of like the, the confusion or maybe fear out of chimichurri, it's a cold sauce. Okay. You know, if you think about uh, pesto, salsa verde, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it falls under the same umbrella. Right. Simple. Simple and really refreshing. Simple and really refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to start with our herbs. Herbs, okay, so yep. you're going to start with how much shiso are you going so to use? Shi so shiso, so here, okay, so shiso, uh, the flavor is rather assertive. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna round that out with two other herbs: okay. Thai basil, okay. all right, and cilantro. Thai basil. Mm -hmm. It has a similar look to regular basil, but man, you smell it. It's very different than regular basil. It's quite pungent, and if you grow basil, it's one of those you can grow, and it's one of those it's hard to get rid of if you're growing it. So I recommend if you like Thai basil, grow some, because it's marvelous. Then that smell wonderful. It does. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna add our basil. Okay. All right. Our picked cilantro. Okay, and you don't want the stems in there, just the leaves. Just the leaves for this one. Sometimes I like stems. All right, and then our, our shiso, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that smells wonderful. Good, right? Okay, yeah. so we have our ginger that we ginger. just chopped. Ginger, mm-hmm. All right, and we have our olive oil. We are gonna use an olive oil for this. Okay. All right. Now, is this like an extra virgin olive oil? This or is an extra matter. version okay. olive oil, super fruity. That's what you're looking for, something that's got a nice rounded fruit flavor to absolutely. it. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna pre-season a little bit, which okay. I think is really, really important. Salt. Yeah, salt and pepper. Pepper. All right, and then we're gonna talk about the acid. Okay. All right, so whenever we're seasoning, especially something like this, I tend to do it in stages, mm -hmm. you know, so that you start with the process, you know, it prevents over-seasoning. So you're gonna add a little bit of acid to this. Absolutely. And that form of acid we're using is a lime. Yes, so it is. So you're going to use the inside of the lime and the outside of the lime. Guys, you know the trusty dusty microplane, right? It's really, really important. Um, you know, this is one step um, that I would just highly recommend not omitting. Um, you know, there's just so much flavor in here. It's a lot um, of flavor in the zest. A lot of flavor in the zest. And when you're removing the zest using the microplane, guys, you just want to get the color off. You don't want the white part underneath, just the color. So whether you're doing a lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit, just get the color off. And then, and really, if you're using lemon juice somewhere or lime juice somewhere, there's no reason you shouldn't be using the zest because it's going to add that much more of that flavor to it. This set smells so good right now. Yeah, so the elements to the chimichurri, right? So traditionally, it's South American dish, right? Um, but here um, we added some Asian influences. Right. So we have, we pulled the garlic out, right. added ginger, right? Right. Pulled the vinegar out, added lime, lime juice. juice. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then pulled a lot of the parsley out, as you'll find sometimes, mm -hmm. and added um, Thai basil and uh, shiso, shiso leaves. Just make sure it's on there, nice and tight. And uh, so we have a couple options here on the rubber coop. This is pretty universal. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do, we're gonna pulse a couple times. Okay. So if they were doing this at home in a blender or in a food processor, um, they wouldn't just start it off. Don't start it off right away on high. You just want to get everything kind of mushed up at first before you increase your speed. Mm -hmm. That looks great. It looks great, right? Yes. And it was one thing about working with herbs, fresh herbs, that's really, really important. Um, the flavor comes from the oils right. within the herb. So you don't want to beat it. 
Right. Too bad. Whether you're chopping on the cutting board, using a uh, food processor, more mortar and pestle, mm -hmm. uh, blender, you know, whatever it is. You know, whenever I smell chimichurri, and I'm going to say this because of any kind of chimichurri, I always picture and salivate for a piece of char grilled skirt steak. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. It's just one of those fabulous things that just elevates that just to another world. So this is our shiso chimichurri. Yes, it is. Next is? We're going to cook the grouper. Cook the grouper and the bok choy, right? And the bok choy. And then we're going to plate up, right? And we are. And we're going to put all these elements together all in one plate. Yum, I can't wait. OK, so let's cook the grouper. We've got it marinated. It looks fantastic. Look at the color. Look at how that's changed. See how it's penetrated? Mm-hmm. Right? Yep. Yeah, but, but what I was saying earlier about that there's no sugar in this. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. all that flavor is so, is so well balanced. So you need me to put a pan on the stove. Yes, please. And we need to get a pan hot, right? Now, how hot does this pan need to be? So we're going to start medium high heat. OK. All right. And we're going to pan braise the fish. Oh, boy. Yep. It's a great technique. Oh, boy. Let me show you. Now, you guys at home, when you're cooking at home, and you're starting to do a saute or something in a saute pan, please get your pans hot first before you put any food in them. Mm -hmm. That yep. is one of the things that I think um, people make is they put their food in a cold pan and then they put their pan on the range to get it hot and the food just sort of sits there and does nothing. So you want it to hit that heat and start caramelizing, right? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, saute means to jump, right? That's right. So it's got to jump. All right, so we're going to season our fish. So even though you've got soy sauce in that marinade, you're still going to put a little bit of salt on there? Definitely. OK. Definitely. Remember to always season both sides of the fish, both sides of the protein, mm -hmm. right? And what you don't want to do is take a chance on it sticking. Right. And if, if your pan's not hot enough, it will stick. It will right. stick, yeah. Yep. yeah. You know, and you won't have that nice, beautiful sear. You know, what we're about to see here is a, is a pretty even caramelization, right? So cooking's all about technique, right? It is about technique. All about technique. Mm -hmm. So the technique has to be correct. That's what people learn in culinary school is technique. So we see the oil dancing? Yeah. All right. Just a touch of smoke. If you don't hear that sizzle, your pan isn't hot enough. So there's going to be a little bit of splatter from the marinade mm -hmm. hitting the oil. You know, but just tilt the pan away from you. Be careful with it. Right. And you're going to put the side that you're going to serve up. Presentation you're side. Put that down, down, down first. first. Correct. Right. Yeah. Very important. Because the other side doesn't get quite as caramelized for some reason. Because it's the back side, and it knows it's the back side. <laughs> yeah. And it, but a lot of that is because the pan cools down. Yes. You don't have the same temperature there. Right. You smell it. I can smell it. Yeah. I can smell. I can smell all those flavors in that fish. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, in the whole dish, even though there's there's uh, one, two, three, four, five components to it, four mm -hmm. or five components to it. They should all complement each other, you know. So, so it's, a, it's a simple process of, of kind of building flavor from the ground up, yeah. you know, from the rice uh, to the fish to the vegetable, uh, and especially the sauce. Because you know, if you don't add flavor and you don't build flavor, you're not going to get flavor. It's just not going to happen for you. So we're showing you all these nice ways of adding these incredible flavors that when you put it in your mouth, your toes are going to curl, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, in a subtle way. In a subtle way. That's beautiful. I think people at home are afraid to cook on that kind of a heat. Turn your hoods on, turn your fans on, make sure it happens. And Have it, some fun it with it. It makes a big difference. And okay. you know, fish doesn't take that long to cook. It just really doesn't. This is eight minutes. Eight from minutes. From start to finish, about eight minutes. And that's a six ounce piece of fish. So we see the color on the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're gonna do, so we seared the fish. So, so braising is a combination of two techniques, right? right. Dry heat, wet heat. Right. All right, so we have the dry heat taken care of, and now it's time for the wet heat. And this is? So this is a stock that we make from lobster and uh, shellfish shells. Okay. All right, it's a seafood dish. Okay. We're building flavor. So this is going to be our braising liquid mm -hmm. and also our glaze. Okay. Oh, okay. And so now that it's got a nice boil on it, we're going to sit that on mm -hmm. the back. Yeah, so we'll just top this. Okay. All right. And so some of that steam yeah. uh, will help facilitate the cooking process. Yeah. So now we're going to do bok choy. And we're going to do that in another yeah. saute pan, right? Yes, it is. And just regular old olive oil again. Old olive oil. Yeah. So this is pretty simple and straightforward. So you're using a baby bok choy. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. 
So, so you have several different varieties of mm -hmm. choy, right? So you, uh, mm -hmm. most notorious is the baby bok choy, mm -hmm. but this uh, is baby choy. Okay. You know. Okay. It's just called choy. Yeah, okay. and you see the see the different. It has a different stem to yes, it. Yes, it does. Beautiful, different character yes. uh, in the leaf. Yeah. And um, all around different structure. The leaves seem to have more of a um, substance to them. Absolutely, yeah. which is what we're gonna we're gonna sear these. Okay. And we need that substance in order for, to hold up to that. We certainly seal. do. Now you might be asking, why when you put that choy in there do you not hear any spatter like we did with the fish? Because there's no water on the choy, that's why. That spatter noise came from all the liquid that was in with the fish. So these will cook rather quickly. Right. And whenever we cook these at the restaurant, mm -hmm. we go probably about 60%. Okay. 60% doneness, okay. and then we'll let the heat carry over. Right. You know, so by the time you cook it, you plate it, it, it gets to the guests, it's done. It's done, right, it's done. and it's not overdone. It's not overdone. Right. Yep. And there's such a big difference when a vegetable is overdone. And Integrity of the vegetable absolutely. is so important. Absolutely. I love you know, vegetables. I mean, every, every element of the dish, you know, is important to me. Yep. Ooh, that looks yeah. great. It does look good. All right. Okay, so that's the bok choy. That's the bok choy. And what's next? So next, we're gonna glaze our fish. Okay. So this is one of those extra elements, techniques of cooking, you know, that's really, really super important. All right, especially in the restaurant. So you have this beautiful piece of fish, mm -hmm. right? We marinated it for a day, mm -hmm. all right? Now we're searing it, you know, so we wanna give it all the love. Okay. Right? All the yum. Okay, so we just use the, the lobster stock that it braised in as right. we reduce down. We're gonna add a little bit of butter, mm -hmm. all right, and we're gonna finish the fish with the glaze. Okay. All right, and so we glaze really for two reasons, aesthetics mm -hmm. and flavor, okay. all right? Because you wanna be able to present, by the, t by the time the fish gets to the guests, it needs to be nice and moist, all right, and not dry. Right, so just spoon that over there like that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people might associate Basting mm -hmm. with meats, you know, of course the holidays come to mind, right? Right, but um, pretty much every piece of fish that goes out the restaurant or upstream is basted. It adds the moisture and mm -hmm. it, it gives it that beautiful sheen. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. Yep. Yeah. That's it's gorgeous. Done. That's done. That's done. All right. So now we're going to do the rice. Now we're going to do the rice. So right. with the rice, we're going yep. to take our already cooked rice. Already cooked rice. Just a little bit of liquid. So this could be, you know, a, a vegetable stock. Okay. Um, even a chicken stock is fine. You know, a blonde chicken stock works mm -hmm. well. Your rice cooker will actually hold your rice hot for you as well. So if you wanted to cook it early or, in fact, I've known people who make rice and leave it in their cooker until it's gone. But that some people that eat a lot of Cajun food and stuff like that will have piles yeah. and piles of rice every day. On the line during service, we leave them in the steamer. Yeah, it keeps yeah. it hot, doesn't it overcook does. it. Okay, so we got rice and a little bit of stock in there. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna add what to that? Our so this is our shiso chimichurri. Mm, okay. So it's really gonna give that rice a wonderful dimension of flavor. So you know how the, the, the brown rice is really, really earthy, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. um, um, almost has a nutty element yeah, to it. absolutely. So this chimichurri works perfectly with mm. it. So we're gonna plate up. What are we gonna put on the plate first? So we're gonna get rice. Rice, yep. voila, there you go. Rice. All right, and so here, all right, we're gonna start to the right of the center. So this is all about building the presentation so we have the choy, mm -hmm. all right? And so we'll take largest to smallest. Okay. All right? Just nest them in. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it around. I see, yeah. okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna frame the plate. With the fish next? The fish will be next, please. Okay. All right, so one last glaze. We're gonna carefully lift this up, right? Mm-mm-mm. So we have our bok choy, our rice, our fish. Mm -hmm. So we have just a touch of kimchi. Okay. Right? Kimchi is obviously fermented mm -hmm. cabbage mm -hmm. and other vegetables. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's an element uh, that ties into the dish. All right. So, and so we, kimchi, they can just go buy, right? Kimchi, you just buy, yeah. And it, yeah, it's available, absolutely. like we were talking about earlier, it's available just about anywhere now. So many varieties of kimchi out there. But this, we literally just took this, chopped it, mm -hmm. and added some fresh chives to it. 
Okay, so you added a little bit to it, yeah. A little okay. bit to it, yeah, we did. All mm -hmm. right, so here we have an aioli. And what's in your aioli? So aioli, we have uh, the prime ingredient is yuzu juice. Oh, yeah. yuzu, yeah. if you don't know, is a Japanese grapefruit, and it is unique and divine. It is. It is. It is. Okay, there's no cream on the dish Okay. here, and this is not made with cream, okay. but it adds a creamy element to it. Okay. And then these beautiful Tega, uh, Tega Hills Farms pea shoots. They make a lot of really nice herbs for restaurants nowadays. Many, many years. Yeah. What a great family. They, I mean, really. Pioneers in the community. Well, they really are because they have made so many wonderful things available to us in the restaurant industry here in Charlotte. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they've gone beyond us because it is just a wonderful, wonderful company. Okay, there we go. There's our vinaigrette. Now our vinaigrette is still warm. Still warm, right? So about two ounces, ounce and a half, two ounces, right, is enough. And this is that Meyer lemon white shoyu vinaigrette. It is. Yeah. Yep. So we serve it just like this. And then right? the customer can pour the sauce over it as they want, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, lovely. Or hopefully the server will take care of that for them. Okay. Part of the oh, presentation. Okay. Okay. Right. So it comes out to the table. Yep. <gasps> Look at how beautiful. That's why the server that needs nice? to do it. Yep. Oh, all right. So, Sam, look at this. You guys, look, 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 look what we have for you. If you want to grab our recipes, we have them on our website at pbscharlotte.org, or you can drop me an email at pamela.roberts at cpcc.edu. Sam, this looks delightful. Thank so, you. I can't wait to get a fork and dig in. Thank so, you. Catch us next time on Charlotte Cooks, and we will see you next time. A production of PBS Charlotte.